This is Jared live from LA now where the Celtics can become the first team ever to complete a road trip sweep of all four California teams. And as we mentioned, Jared, second leading scorer Jason Tatum is out tonight with that shoulder injury or the Celtics thinking this is a short term or maybe a multiple game injury. Well, Matt, good to speak with you. Brad Stevens said earlier this morning that it is day to day. He doesn't believe it to be very serious, the shoulder injury that likely dates back to the Golden State game for Tatum. However, they were not willing to commit to a timetable as to when we will see Jason Tatum back on the court. Well, last time they met, and uh, Brad Stevens alluded to it, they gave up a 28 point lead against the Clippers in what turned out to be the largest Clipper comeback in franchise history. Kyrie Irving was hurt in that game as well. I imagine the Celtics were reminded of this more than a few times this morning. Yeah, it, it certainly seemed like it, Matt, because everyone I spoke to about tonight's game, the first thing that they mentioned was that lead that they blew at home against the Clippers. So I have to imagine it was a big point of emphasis during team meetings and film study. Jared, amidst all the noise in L.A. around the Laker franchise, the Clippers have just sort of done their job under the radar, continued to add to the roster. Two of those pieces, Ivica Zubac and Landry Shamit, have played really, really well for them. What did you hear from them about their roles and how they're assimilating? Well, it's funny, Griff. Uh, I was with the Celtics this morning, and Kyrie Irving was asked about exactly what you're talking about and he compared Landry Shamit to J.J. Redick what he brings to the table and I think when we look back on this year and all the deals that were made leading up to the trade deadline and obviously the Tobias Harris one being one of if not the biggest maybe we're going to reflect back at some point and say wow the Clippers got picks and a guy who is a part of their core foundation moving forward for a long time. So I certainly feel like the Clippers love the fact that he's here. I'm going to speak with Doc Rivers here in a couple of moments. And when I spoke to him last week, he, he talked to me about it's just everyone has the right intentions here and the roles are all about team first. So even though they've had a revolving door of players coming in because of injury or because of trades or different transactions that have been made, Doc Rivers has been so proud of the leadership of this group that everyone who comes in is all about winning and doing whatever it takes to win. Jared is fish. I want to turn back to the Jared on tape that spent some time <laughs> with Brad Stevens. This Most morning. people like that guy better fish anyway, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, Jer uh, Stevens himself, you know, Kyrie's been under some scrutiny in terms of yeah. his leadership style. Brad Stevens has also received a little bit of heat in terms of how he's managed or lack thereof managed uh, the team in terms of rotation, roles, etc. How has he handled and maintained himself throughout that process? I think he's accepted accountability uh, as much as a coach should. And Danny Ainge, team president, recently has had to almost come to the defense of his head coach saying it's not a coaching issue that has plagued us right now. It's players needing to figure out their roles. And if you're unhappy, Danny Ainge said recently, with your role, then play better. And I think we've seen a bit of that. And I think that there has been this uh, rumored meeting that may have taken place in the last couple of weeks with Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens and Kyrie Irving. And whatever may or may not have transpired there, there is a different message that's being delivered by the team in the last couple of days. There's this conversation about the plane ride from Boston to San Francisco last week, nearly six hours on a plane that included singing, dancing, and a whole lot of uh, gambling, if you will, <laughs> card games, dice. And that may have brought this team together, and maybe it's a chicken in the egg syndrome where the winning has caused the good feel. But maybe, maybe there is something to some sort of camaraderie that was collected by a group that is old and young going from Boston to San Francisco last week. That now legendary plane ride, which, as you yeah. know, is very much like a production meeting here at NBA TV, singing, <laughs> dancing, gambling, the whole thing. Uh, yeah, except for those plane rides take off on time. Yeah, yeah that's a good <laughs> point. The Seas are plus 24 per 100 possessions with Gordon Hayward on the floor during this trip out west. I know that's a small sample, but yeah. it's led to another round of is he back questions. How does Brad Stevens measure Hayward's progress? Well, let me just say, tongue-in-cheek, I did ask Gordon Hayward that very question earlier today, if he is indeed back. And, and he's quick to point out, listen, even though Gordon Hayward over this West Coast trip in three games is averaging 19 points and shooting about 70% from the floor, he feels like it's the intangibles. It's the other parts of the game that you can't necessarily measure in a box score that will determine whether he is indeed back or not. Things like driving to the basket, getting to the free throw line, being aggressive, making a defensive play that helps his team. Now, 
As you mentioned off the top here, Matt, Jason Tatum's out tonight, and we still don't know yet who is going to start for Tatum in the Celtics starting lineup tonight, but you have to think that even more is going to be asked of Gordon Hayward because when he plays well, this team wins. When Gordon Hayward shoots 50% or better this season, the Celtics are 20 and 2. Mm. All right, that's Jared Greenberg live with us and previously on tape and in the future perhaps on tape and then live later <laughs> yeah. on tonight here on Game Night. Great chatting with you guys.